Oh, I got a concussion last Friday. It's now February 23rd, I think. So it's been like five days. But I'm getting sick of just sitting around and doing nothing in my house, and therefore I figured I would film, even though I may be a little off. I'm on lockdown, and I'm not allowed to do anything with my life. I'm technically not even supposed to read, but shh, nobody needs to know that I'm doing it. Okay? Okay. Hey guys, it's Jay, and I am here with part two of my wrap-up for February. I have read another eight books since part one, which means I'm up to 18 books this February. So without further ado, let us get started! So the first book I read was Half Wild by Sally Green. This is the second book in the Half Bad trilogy. I gave it a 3.5 stars on Goodreads. I really enjoyed it. I don't want to give a synopsis since it is a sequel. So you know, don't want to like, spoil anything for anybody. But I still love Nathan as a character. I thought he was amazing. I thought his character development was awesome in this book. And I'm super excited to read the third book, which comes out soon, I think? Sometime in the near future, I'm pretty sure. But I totally wanted Nathan and a certain somebody who is not in the least because I do not like them together anymore. I do not like them. She is not a good girl. Not a good girl. But a certain somebody and Nathan need to get together because, yes. If you've read the book, you probably know what I'm talking about, but yes, I love them together. Next book was The Detour by S.A. Bowden. I gave the book a 2.5 stars on Goodreads. I didn't really like it that much. It was really predictable. I was able to call like the entire thing straight from the beginning. It's about this 17-year-old author named Olivia, and she goes by Livy, and she is invited to this like A-list writers event. And she's basically a spoiled brat who thinks that she's entitled to everything because she's a best-selling author at only the age of 17. But on her way to this event, she gets in a car crash and she flips her car and she is unable to move because she dislocated her shoulder. And the last thing she sees before she passes out is this little girl playing a flute. She wakes up in the basement of Peg, who is the mother of this little girl, and she thinks that she is saved by them, but in reality they have other plans for her. I really hated Livy as a main character. She was so spoiled and self-centered, which I know is the point, and the author did a great job with it because, like, I hated her. But I got to the point where I couldn't even stand reading because she was so annoying and self-centered. And you would think that she would eventually, you know, have that character development where she's like, you know what, I was wrong, I shouldn't be this snobby, but it never comes, never comes. And like I said before, it was extremely predictable. I was able to call literally every single plot twist. The pace was really good, it was super fast, but it just was way too predictable for my liking. The next book was A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray. I gave this book a 3.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. This book follows Gemma Doyle, who is 16, and she just lost her mother in a tragic and mysterious death in India. As a result, she is sent to Spence, an English boarding school for girls, where they are taught how to become ladies and wives. While there, Gemma discovers that she has this magical ability where she can transport herself into this other realm full of magic and mystery. At Spence, Gemma meets these three girls and she becomes friends with them. One is Felicity and she is extremely power hungry. One is beautiful and her name is Pippa. And one is kind of the social outcast and her name is Anne. And together they decide that they're going to discover this newfound ability that Gemma has. Unfortunately for them, they discover that a dark side comes along with this magic. I really like Gemma. I found her kind of immature and stupid at times, but she was also very strong and independent. I loved how sarcastic she was, but some of her decision making was kind of idiotic and I didn't really relate to her in any way for that reason. I thought that Felicity and Pippa were basically the exact same characters. One was just like the queen and the other one was the follower, but they were basically the exact same people. And I really liked Anne. She did get on my nerves at points because she was so spineless that it got to the point where everybody it was just like basically like Anne shut up your idiot and she was like, yeah I know, sorry. Like, Stand up for yourself, girl, please. Thank you. I thought that the pacing of the book was really well done. It wasn't too fast and it wasn't too slow. There was kind of moments where it did go really fast, but then the author would put in slow moments to kind of get you to catch your breath and, like, relax a little bit, and then she would throw you with the fast pace again, which I really like in books. I was able to call most of the stuff that did happen. The plot twists weren't that unpredictable. It was pretty obvious if you paid attention to the story. So that was kind of a downfall for me and why it only got 3.5 stars. 
The next book that I read was Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's about a girl named Samantha and she is mean, super mean, but she's popular so everybody kind of turns the blind eye to how mean she is. Her three friends, Lindsay, Elodie, and Allie, rule the school with her. Then on the way home from a party, there's a car crash and Sam ends up dying and she keeps waking up on the same day, February 12th, for seven days straight. I hated Sam at the beginning of this book. Which is the entire point of the book. She was so egotistical and self-centered that it just made me angry how mean she was to people for no apparent reason other than because she was mean. Like, honestly, when she died, I was kind of happy. I was like, girl, you deserve it. Like deal with it, you're dead now, like, your life sucks because you were mean, and it's called karma. Throughout the book, her character development was amazing. She ended up realizing that everything that she does and every action that she has on other people has a consequence on not only on herself, but to the other people. Which I found to be a wonderful life lesson because your actions have consequences, kids, remember that. I thought that Lauren Oliver did a great job capturing the voice of a teenager because, like, honestly, let's be real, a lot of teenagers act like this. And think that they're entitled to being bitchy teenagers because they live on this earth, and it's just annoying. I was one of those teenagers when I was 16. I was a devil child. I'm not gonna lie. I was terrible to my parents. But I learned. Parents are always right. Listen to your parents. Everything that you say to another person, it sticks with them, even if you don't think it will. Like, they're gonna remember it, so be nice. Be nice to people. I love how with each day that Sam relives, you get to see inside another character's life, like one of the side characters. I loved Izzy, her little sister, and Kent especially, but it was really cool learning about Lindsay as well and like everything that she's been through and how insecure she is. I just really liked seeing how vulnerable the characters all were. The next book I read was Almost Perfect by Brian Catcher. I gave this book a 3.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. Logan and his longtime girlfriend Brenda just broke up recently because she cheated on him and now he doesn't think that he can trust anybody. That's when Sage moves to town and they instantly become the best of friends. She's tall and funny and quirky and he can't seem to get her off his mind. When Logan tries to pursue her, Sage says that he should stay away from her and that they're not good together and Logan basically ignores her until Sage gives in and they kiss. That's when she reveals her biggest secret. She was born a male. I really did not like Logan as a person. I understand that he's from like a small town and a lot of small towns in the states aren't really all that accepting of, you know, trans people. From what I've heard, I don't know if that's actually true, but here in Canada, that's the rumor, so I could be wrong, I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. I consider myself a very understanding person and I see it as As long as you're happy, you do you girl. If you want to be a man, you be a man. If you want to be a female, you be that female. Like, I don't care as long as you're a happy person. But I understand where he is coming from, that Sage didn't tell him right away, but she shouldn't have to. That's just my opinion. And she did tell him that they wouldn't be suited well for each other and he ignored her. So really this is your fault Logan. Deal with your consequences. Like I said about the other book, there are consequences for your actions. Although I will admit that Logan's reaction is probably the reaction that a lot of teenage boys would have anywhere in the world. This was a little bit over the top. It was like every two seconds he was like, oh my god now I'm gay. Like what am I gonna do? What is everybody gonna think of me? Like nobody cares. Do you boo boo? Do you? I absolutely love Sage though. She was so quirky and funny and I just thought that she was like the star of the entire show. The only problem that I did have with Sage was that she kept going back to Logan every time he would do something mean or nasty to her. She was like, it's okay, like, you love me. I know you do. Like, don't worry. Like, no girl, kick him to the curb. You can do so much better than him. That's all I'm gonna say. The next book that I read this February was Faceless by Alyssa Scheinmel. I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm so sorry. I gave the book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I really, really liked this one. I thought it was super entertaining. It's about a girl named Maisie Winters who wakes up in a hospital bed one day and she discovers that she's been in a coma for three weeks because she was in an electrical fire which literally destroyed her face. Obviously Maisie is very upset about this, I mean who wouldn't be? And then she discovers that she is a candidate for a face transplant. She ends up realizing that nothing is ever going to be the same and it basically just follows Maisie through her life trying to readjust into her school and being with her boyfriend and friends again. I thought that the author did an amazing job portraying 
a teenage voice, especially one who was going through something so life-changing like Maisie was, I thought it was really, really well done. I loved how sarcastic and quirky Maisie was, even though she was extremely negative. But I mean, like, it's realistic because I would be extremely pissed off if that happened to me, even though, like, it's nobody's fault, but I would be so mad and I'm sure I would act the exact same way that Maisie did. I thought that the family dynamics in the book were so well done, even though not all of them were super positive. I thought that they were very well written and I absolutely loved the friendships between Serena and Maisie and Maisie and Adam. I thought that they were great and I would love to read more about them, but I don't think there's going to be another book about them, but I really enjoyed it. I can't decide if I liked the love interest Chirag or not. He kind of pissed me off, but I understand why he was doing the things that he did. But, I don't know, I can't decide if he was a good guy or not. I honestly don't know. I ended up reading this book in one sitting. It was super fast-paced and I could not put it down. I loved the acceptance message, not only about society accepting someone else who is different, but also the self-acceptance that came along with Maisie as she grew. The next book is You by Caroline Kepneys. I absolutely love this book. It is definitely my favorite book that I read this month so far, which, but I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I originally started reading from the physical copy, which I did like, but then I switched over to an audiobook of this book, and it was so much better. Like, being able to actually hear Joe's voice and actually being inside his head was so much creepier than I think if you actually just read the book in your own voice. I found myself loving Joe and like sitting there like yeah you know like that's actually reasonable what you're doing but like it's not at all he was insane like certifiable insane but I just I loved him. I this book follows Joe and he meets a girl named Beck and he instantly becomes attracted to her and he decides that they are going to date no matter what. So he inserts himself into her life and they end up starting this relationship and He's a super creepy stalker guy and she has no idea and it's just their life together and it was <laughs> so good. It was so good. I'm thinking of putting up a full review of this just on this book. So if you guys are interested, leave a comment down below and uh, I'll do that for you. Alright, five out of five stars, seriously read the book. And the final book that I will be talking about in this wrap up, which is the 18th book this month, is Cryer's Cross by Lisa McMahon. I am so disappointed in this book. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I was super excited to read it because I loved Lisa McMahon's Dead to You. I thought it was an amazing story. I thought the writing was amazing. And this one just fell super short for me. It was not good. It's about this girl named Kendall Fletcher and she has OCD and she's living in a very, very small town called Cryer's Cross in Minnesota. After a young girl disappears without a trace, Kendall throws herself into soccer and dance and hanging out with her best friend and boyfriend Nico in order to distract herself from the creepy things that are going on. A few days later, Nico ends up going missing. When Kendall realizes that Tiffany, who, the girl who went missing, and Nico sat in the same desk, she begins to think that this isn't exactly a coincidence and there's more going on than meets the eye. The plot of this was kind of stupid, to be honest. I don't want to give it away. The cover kind of gives it away, but it just, it wasn't good. It fell flat for me. I appreciate what Lisa McMahon was trying to do and it definitely had potential but it just it didn't get to the creepy level that I was hoping it was going to get to. I was really disappointed too because I usually love books with mental health issues but it just kind of seemed like a cop out and Kendall only had OCD for the ending of the book to wrap up well and I just I did not enjoy it at all. I just nope. Nope, 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 nope. Alright guys so that was the next eight books that I read this February. There might be a part three of this because I'm on lockdown and I'm not allowed to do anything with my life until my concussion symptoms are gone. We'll see. We still have another week of February to go. So maybe I'll get like three more books done and I'll do another wrap-up. Who knows? I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.